For George, it was the perfect kind of day to go to a fair. George, okay, you've got your sunglasses, your water bottle. Uh -huh. I can't think of anything else we need. It's fair time. Allie, what's with all the stuff? It's my school fair survival kit. I got everything I need to have the best fair day ever. Wow. I got water, suntan lotion, mustard, ketchup, chair, tissues. This is to hold my lemonade. And what's in the backpack? Nothing. It's empty. Why are you bringing an empty backpack? Well, you never know what'll happen at a fair. One day I brought home a pet pig. What should we do first? Mm, let's see. Uh, there's a craft table over there. I see face painting. <gasps> wow, look at that bear. We'll be here all weekend. <laughs> let's go. <laughs> <laughs> Bottom. I named him on the walk over. Step right up to Mr. Quint's duck game. Wow. Well, hello there. Ah. Hi, Mr. Quint. Wow. How do we play it? Well, you knock down all seven ducks, and the bear is yours. Well, what are we waiting for? Ah. Have fun. George, get ready to count. <laughs> Counting the successful tosses was easy for George because Allie didn't have any. I'm just getting warmed up. Let me try that again. <laughs> <laughs> give someone else a chance. Now you can come back later, you know. We'll be here all weekend. How could something that looks so easy be so hard? George knew why Allie didn't knock down the ducks. She needed practice. First, George would build a practice game for Allie. He just needed some ducks, but he only had one rubber duck. Where could he get seven ducks that looked alike? There must be something he could use to make some ducks. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven ducks. And then, George filled some bags with rice for Allie to throw. George knew that anyone could get better with practice. <laughs> All right, but I'm telling you, if I throw this, there's no way I'm going to knock down a cardboard. <gasps> Duck! Ah! Hey! <laughs> Did I do that? Maybe I should quit while I'm ahead. Okay. <laughs> oh, missed again. <laughs> okay. Hero alone. Mission, find the one and restore it to its rightful place. Mere guards can't stop fearless George. <laughs> 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 
He's tracked the one of ones to here, the lair of the dark Betsy. Professor Buford Fromage, famous for smartness. Yay! Ooh. Help! Ah! I am free! <laughs> and sore. <laughs> Even though Fromage is free, you will never get the one of ones back. <laughs> She's right. You'll never find it. Because you'll never get past my big, brass, bubbly butt! Ah! <gasps> ah! Hey! Ah! Time out! Time out, Steve! Whoosh! Clank! You mean Professor Fromage! No, I mean Steve. Time out! Why are you sticking a robot on us? I'm supposed to be the bad guy this time. <laughs> yeah, you're bad, but I'm secretly worse. It's a twist. Exciting. Unexpected. Well, adventures are supposed to be full of surprises. Whoosh, clank, clank, ha. Betsy, Steve, time to go. Ah. You want us to stop playing right at the exciting part? Well, that means tomorrow you'll start playing right at the exciting part. Hey, that's right! George didn't want to mess everything up by cleaning, but he knew that you couldn't leave toys on the floor. Someone could get hurt. Before we go, help George clean up. It took so long to set all this up, we never got to find out how our high-stakes adventure ended. George thought all night about how he could keep his toys set up. The next day, Betsy and Steve rushed over to play. Ah! Let's set up as fast as we can. No time to waste. Hey! <laughs> he already did it! It's not as big, but it's also not on the floor. Does that mean we don't have to spend time putting it all away? <laughs> You're so smart. Why couldn't I have had a monkey instead of a brother? You guys will never escape! Clank! Clank! There's no escape! But George had an idea. Fearless George had to think fast. Okay, now we're tied to the robot. Huh. You'll never get the one! I'm sorry. Huh? I thought it would be okay to set up out here, but it turns out Aunt Augusta's coming over for tea, so I'll need to use the table. That was too bad. Where else could George set up the toys? <gasps> oh. <laughs> Balcony! Great idea! I'll help you set it up out there. You can leave it as long as you want. <laughs> this is great, George. We don't have to waste a lot of time building it and then putting it away. <laughs> Oh, I have to tell you, George, I am pretty excited. 
I've never been to a clown school before. Oh, just think. We get to see Pepe El Loco, the world's greatest clown performer. Okay, here we are. Just have to find a parking space. Oh, look, there's one right in front. Ah, it's okay. There's still room for us. Wow! Pepe El Loco is popular. Why don't you go in and save some seats for us while I park the car? The show is on the ninth floor. <laughs> this was the best school ever. <gasps> and that was the funniest messenger ever. The elevator left without him. George decided he should take the stairs. The messenger clown dropped his bag and his hat and nose. Maybe the messenger clown was going to Pepe El Loco's show too. George could give them back to him. Yes! Sorry. The stairwell doors didn't have numbers, but George could still find the ninth floor because George could count. One. Two. Three. George had forgotten what number he was on. Maybe someone inside could help. <gasps> A messenger! Thank goodness you're here! Why aren't you in uniform? <laughs> Company rules! All clown school employees must be in clown uniform at all times! Now, Pepe El Loco, the world's greatest clown, will be here in 15 minutes to perform his amazing show. But he'll need this. Ooh. It's part of the greatest clown gadget ever. But it's top secret. Pepe mailed all the parts to different offices so no one would know what it was. <laughs> I need you to pick them up and deliver them to Pepe. <laughs> George was excited to help Pepe. If he moved fast, he could pick up all the parts and still make the show. The next gadget part you need to pick up is on the fifth floor. This will help you remember. Hurry! Pepe Aloco will be here in 14 and a half minutes! Are tricky. Take the stairs to five. You're on the third floor now. <laughs> but how do you get from three to five? George was super good at counting from one to ten, but counting from the middle was hard. Mm. Uh -huh. And then George realized he could go down to the first floor, then count his way back up to five. <laughs> This was one. 
when farmers like Mr. Rankins were preparing for the livestock competition at the state fair. And George was helping. I have high hopes for you, Ulysses. I think you're going to win a blue ribbon this year. But, Grandpa, your animals always win blue ribbons. Yeah! Allie was right. Every animal did have a blue ribbon. Every animal, except Howie the hog. Hey, ha ha! Yeah, where's Howie's blue ribbon? <laughs> Howie wanted a ribbon more than anything, but somehow it never happened. Ah, uh, I've entered Howie a couple of times. He always starts out eager, don't you? <laughs> But I guess he doesn't want the ribbon bad enough to train for it, do you, Howie? <laughs> <sighs> He's so disappointed when he loses. I don't have the heart to train him again. Uh. <laughs> You're right, George. Maybe we could train Howie. Here's the rule book. Good luck. Washing a pig was easy. Ah! 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 Howie likes mud. Once they got the kinks worked out. And the second step was a breeze. Almost. <sighs> well, how's it going? <laughs> Look, Grandpa, we got Howie washed and brushed. Oh, that's the easy part. Well, good luck with the third step. Mm. Looks like we walk Howie for 30 minutes and poke him with a stick. <gasps> poke him with a stick? <laughs> oh. No wonder Howie didn't like training. But, Grandpa, why do we have to poke Howie? Well, if there's another way to get a hog to exercise for half an hour, I'm all ears. Hmm. There had to be another way. <laughs> <laughs> it's hard to think when there's a pig snout tickling your ear. a way to get a hog to move without a stick. It was called an apple. <laughs> Coming! <laughs> <laughs> Training hogs with treats was easy. <laughs> Unless your hog was higher than your treat. George knew how to get the treat taller. Hey, hey! It's working! Howie's exercising! Go, Howie, go! Woohoo! <laughs> Howie's gonna win that blue ribbon for sure, huh? to win that blue ribbon all right, but exercising made him really hot. <laughs> and the mud was so cool. Oh, Howie stopped exercising again. Maybe he gets too hot. And he needs another bath. <laughs> Outside for Howie to exercise. <laughs> oh, I know. Grandma's living room is nice and cool. Howie can exercise there. On the first day of summer, 
George and Bill always played a game of monkey rules baseball. Ooh. Okay, three balls and two strikes. So here it is, the pitch that will decide the entire game. Ready? Monkey Rules Baseball is pretty much the same as regular baseball. You run around the bases, but then it gets complicated. You have to touch a fence. Something blue. A cow. And the man with the yellow hat. Safe. I assumed you touched a cow. <laughs> That makes it a tied score. I guess you'll have to play one more game to decide the title. <laughs> Sorry, no can do. As a newspaper delivery specialist, I know from sad experience the dangers of getting overheated. We need to cool off. We should take an inaugural dip in my pool. Woohoo! We'll cool right down once we get into that. Ugh. Take of green stuff? Huh? Algae! Yeah. A city kid like you probably doesn't know this. Yeah. But even though algae looks like grass, it's actually a lot of tiny organisms that grow in the water. Ah. Guess I should have covered the pool last fall. <laughs> ah. The proper way to handle a situation like this is to dump it out and fill it with clean water. <laughs> Ready. One, two, three! <laughs> it's not working! <laughs> you lift the bottom and I'll pull the top to flip it over. Well, this isn't going to work. Oh. We need a bulldozer to turn this over. A shovel? Not exactly the bulldozer I had in mind. Idea, but it's going to take forever. <gasps> Hang on, I know. Ooh. Perfect. Here. We've only emptied that much? Ugh, these sure aren't moving enough water. I need a break. So hot. Good idea. The shade is a lot cooler. I'll pour some lemonade. Given up. <gasps> I know. <sighs> I'm a genius. Don't move, George. I'll make you a really long one. <laughs> I'll just stick a bunch of straws together. Okay. That should be long enough. Sucking lemonade through that long straw turned out to be hard work. But eventually, it came. And kept coming. The straw wanted to keep going. How did the lemonade come out of the straw by itself? Oh, okay, let's go empty that pool. Then we can really cool off. Ah. 